Hey guys, this is Rahil back with another video tutorial for Safari.com and in this video tutorial we'll be learning about GURP. GURP is a task runner for JavaScript projects. Uh, you can automate your tasks with GURP. Concatenation, minification, auto browser refresh, server restart are some of these. Well, these are just basic tasks. You can even do more complex tasks with it. There is another tool out there uh, known as Grunt. Uh, both of them are popular. You can use either of these. I prefer Gulp over Grunt uh, for a couple of reasons. One, it is code over configuration and hence uh, it, it enhances the readability. Two, uh, in Gulp you can uh, chain the output of one plugin as an input to another plugin. So you can uh, chain multiple plugins in a single task and write the final output. One more advantage of Gulp is that it uses Node.js streams, uh, which means that it does not have to write temporary files on disk. It does it in memory and then only writes the final output. So let's get started. To install Gulp, uh, you will need to have Node.js installed into your computer. If you don't have it installed, uh, please go to Node.js.org and download it from there. So let's first have a look at my directory over here what I have I have a source folder where I have one index I have one app file and there is a SAS file as well cool then I have a public directory this is where I'll uh, dump all my build using GUG there are some files and browse above uh, components so let's get started So first of all, I'll recommend you to have a package.json because uh, whatever plugin you install for Gulp, you will want to have it as a developer dependency. So let's do npm init. Okay, cool. First question one. Don't want to know what you want. So there we have a package.json. Next we'll install Gulp globally. I already have it installed but uh, if you want to install it you need to run npm install hyphen g gulp and hit enter. So this will install the gulp globally but uh, even uh, remember to save it as a developer dependency. So let's do it npm install gulp save this will save it as a developer dependency okay so now this is done mm, let me just make the screen a little bit bigger for you next we will install some of the gulp plugins uh, let's install uh, js hint npm install I don't worry this does not install so quickly I am actually pausing the video for some time to save some time over here so let's do npm install uh, this time let's install gulp uglify oh gulp jsint will validate our javascript for errors now this gulp uglify will minify our javascript files Next, I'll install Gulp SAS. This will compile our SAS files into CSS. Now we'll install uh, Browser Sync. Uh, browser Sync is really an awesome tool for uh, synchronized browser testing. 
using which you can synchronize your browsers across multiple devices and thus test them simultaneously. Uh, well, in this case, we'll be only using it for creating a server and running the application in a, in a browser. And we'll reload the browser whenever our source code changes. So, npm install browser sync. Also to note, browser sync will uh, give some errors if you are installing it on Windows. Uh, but for what we are doing over here, it won't matter. So that's it with the installation of the plugins. Let's begin with configuring our Gulp plugins. So for that, uh, first create a Gulp file, Gulp.js file. This is the configuration file where you co configure all your plugins. Gulp file.js. First thing you'll have to require all the plugins that you're using. Uh, let me just copy paste the code to save some time. So remember to uh, call the create method on browser sync. So now we have required our files. Let's write our first task. So we are using the JS hint plugin uh, which will validate our JavaScript files. So it will look into the src directory and its subdirectories for all the JS files and it will report us if there are any syntax errors. So let's test this out. Let's go to our command prompt and run gulp task name that is lint. Remember this is the task name that uh, will run this function here you go it's giving us one warning saying missing semicolon on line 6 column 4 let's check it out yes yeah now let's run that again Now let's go ahead and configure a few more plugins. <coughs> I'm actually copy pasting over here to save some time. So I'll explain you each task over here. This this task will uh, compile our SCSS files into uh, normal CSS files. We are using Gulp SAS plugin for that over here. Next is the scripts task. Uh, this will minify all our JS files and write them into public directory. And this will maintain our folder structure as well in the public directory. Then we are finally copying all the index files into the public directory. Now, uh, usually Gulp runs uh, all the tasks asynchronously. Uh, but there's a way to you can uh, specify a dependent task using which the task will wait for all its dependent tasks to complete and then it will execute itself. So let's do that. <coughs> so this is a build task which will uh, carry out lint SCSS scripts and copy all this task for us. And then finally it will console build complete. So let's test this out. Gulp build. Here you go. It carried out all all the other dependent tasks and then finally console build complete. Uh, now let's uh, have a look at our public directory, like what we have in that after we run build. So if you see, we have the same structure over here we have app.js let me open it you can see it is minified 
we also have the style sheets and it's changed to CSS from SCSS. <clears throat> so yeah. And if you see over here what I was talking about earlier about chaining plugins. So the pipe statement over here allows us to change the input of one plugin, sorry, the output of one plugin as an input to another. So like we have uh, uglified or minified the JavaScript over here. If we have multiple JavaScript files, we can even concat into a single file and then place it into a public directory in a single task. So now the next thing we'll do is configure a server, a static server with browser sync and also specify a default task. So this is how you will uh, configure a static server in browser sync. You specify the base directory. This is the directory from which uh, browser sync will serve all your files. Then this is the key over here because uh, browser sync will run on uh, sorry our, our, our files will run on a server. So if you look at the directory structure over here, it won't be able to find Bower components. So for that, what we can do is we can specify a path that would be our key and then the folder, the relative folder to the gulp.js file. So the relative folder name is Bower components. So what this will do is this will um, make this folder available at this URL. So it would be server name slash power components. So, and then finally specify the browser as Firefox. Cool. So next what we'll do is specify a default task. And we'll also learn about Gulp Watch. So here we have specified a default task and we have added browser sync as a dependent task. Also remember we have added build as a dependent task to browser sync. So whenever a default task runs, it will first wait for browser sync. But whenever a browser sync listen, uh, runs, it will wait for build to complete. So it will be build first, then browser sync, then oh, the default will be running both, both of these actually. And then uh, it... Uh, this it will start watching these files so gulp.watch what it does is it uh, watches the files for changes and you can run any task whenever those files changes so whenever a file in src directory will change will run the build task and when it builds it will eventually change the files in public directory so whenever this changes we will listen to the change event and will reload the browser using browser sync so let's see how this works out so um, the thing about default task is if you just run gulp it will run the default task if you don't specify a task name it will run the default task so let's do this now cool all our tasks are run so let's wait for browser sync to start our browser here you go we have it so now let me just quickly show you uh, how gulp watch will watch for changes and then eventually uh, browser sync will reload our browsers hmm. add this app dot file no I'll make some changes in index. So on the right, I have my browser uh, with app, uh, with our application running on it, and on the left, I have the source code in the SRC folder. So let me just quickly add a heading over here. be cool now I'm saving this if 
file if you'll see on the right it automatically refreshes and reflects the changes pretty cool right especially this is very very handy when you're using a multi-monitor screen so you can code on on one side and you can just watch for changes on the other side so this was just a uh, basic on gulp we have just scratched the surface of it um, it can also it, it can perform many other complex tasks which will really save our time and help us you can find all the plugins uh, for gulp on this website it's gulpjs.com plugins so this was it from this tutorial thanks for watching and if you like the video please hit the like button and subscribe and do share thank you until next time